I want to talk about the market reaction today to the FOMC. It was really quite interesting. As you can see here, we're down about percent and a half, a little bit more in the S&P. Uh, NASDAQ fared a little bit worse, as you can see, down almost 2%. There was the weak earnings. There was the bank issue earlier, uh, regional bank complaining about commercial loan problems. Um, and then Powell came out today and didn't give the people what they wanted. So the S&P is down to this 4850 area. Uh, and it's really coming off of massive highs, right? And what's so curious or strange about this sell-off here today was that the options market just wasn't participating in that downside. In this case here in purple, you see the flow of options today in the S&P 500. If this purple or blue line goes up, that's options uh, long positions coming in, so call buyers or put sellers. And if the downside scenario is gonna pick up, you would expect to see these purple and teal lines go lower, telling us that people are buying puts just didn't happen, right? This number being positive on the day tells us that on net, people either bought calls uh, or sold puts. And then not only that, what you see is this T line, it measures only zero DTE flow. So the zero DTE flow just dominated today. So if Powell really scared everybody, if the earnings were just terrible and really shocked everyone away from the market, you would think you would buy some longer dated puts either to bet on downside or to hedge your portfolio. We just didn't really see it. The other thing that syncs with this is that if we go into our implied volatility dashboard, this is a brand new tool we have here. We're comparing fixed strike volatility for today, right now versus yesterday. So yesterday was pricing in the FOMC that was before the bad earnings, all this sort of stuff. And what you can see here is big shades of red across the all of the strikes for all of the given expirations in the S&P 500. Vol is down on a fixed strike basis despite the S&P being down a percent and a half. It's just very strange, right? You, what you'd expect is brighter shades of green that tell us that, hey, people got freaked out by whatever happened today uh, and they wanna buy some puts. They want some of the downside protection. So we're just not seeing that. If you look at term structure, it's a very similar thing here. I'm comparing today's reading in green versus uh, yesterday's close, right? And, and a little bit of elevation, but it's really not much. It's not this screaming you know, risk off thing. Uh, as of yet, again, despite the fact that the S&P is down so much. And what so many people are worried about from in the volatility space is that, look, there's a lot of vol sellers coming out there. There's a lot of people selling puts. And, and if we flip the script enough and, and force a volatility cover, you know, then you get like a mini kind of volume again, you know, 2018 scenario. But so far, we're just not seeing it. So where does that leave us? Uh, you saw a quick preview of it, but in our founder's note this morning, what we said was, look, if we break 480, uh, excuse me, if we break 485 in the spiders, which happened today, we closed uh, fairly well below that 483, then we could see, and we believe this Tesla SPY 480 comes, but we would expect that a pretty good dip response comes in there. The dip response in terms of just uh, equity buyers as well as volatility sellers. Um, and so that's how we're operating here, that yeah, there's a little bit of a vacuum, a little bit of a contraction here in the S&P, um, but it's really under 4,800 that that dip buying attempt is gone and then we would expect VIX and volatility to really spike and really push up um, and then we would see a much faster kind of cascade possibly down uh, in the broader markets. So at the moment, volatility is not suggesting that we're going to see a big push lower, maybe a little bit of extra weakness, but that SPY 480 level should hold. And until volatility really reacts, until we see this term structure really pick up, um, and some of these other signs that there is a bid to that downside volatility, and one has to continue to think that we operate in this you know, larger buy the dip mentality. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, hit us up, info at or leave your questions in the comments section below.